The next thing we're going to talk about is what happens when we have a strong acid or a weak acid. How do we find our hydrogen ion concentration? So now when you have, this is a solution, you're going to actually have two sources of hydrogen ions in an aqueous solution. The first part is obvious. It's going to be the acid component because we're dealing with acids, right? Makes sense. There is also the auto ionization of water. So here's good news for you. The auto ionization of water component, we're going to ignore it unless we have an acid whose strength is less than 10 to the negative 5 molar. So yeah, basically we're not going to be dealing with this. You might encounter that situation um, if you're going into chemical engineering, if you're dealing with very dilute solutions, um, you might encounter that if you're doing biological research and so you want to investigate you know, using acids um, therapeutically, you know, the, the body doesn't, isn't going to, it's not really meant to handle, you know, super concentrated hydrochloric acid, but it can probably handle, you know, a very dilute uh, solution there. So um, when you're getting, when you're working with things that are very dilute, you do need to um, consider that. But for the purposes of this class, we're probably not going to be dealing with that. I don't intend to throw that for you as a trick question. Um, there, th this can get tricky enough um, as it goes along. So now, strong acids. We already talked about this. Strong acids, do you remember which seven they are? I hope so. If not, make your flashcards, go look. They completely dissociate. So there's complete dissociation. So that means the concentration of our hydrogen ion is equal to the concentration of the acid. So if I tell you that you have a 1.2 molar H2SO4, that means your concentration of H3O plus is also 1.2 molar. So these are really easy questions. Sometimes I give you easy questions and y'all y'all don't want to take the easy part. So look for the easy part. Now, that's why I tell you, you gotta know if it's a strong acid. Okay, weak acids on the other hand, they're a little bit more complicated, but it's not that bad. Okay, so remember, weak acids have an incomplete dissociation. So, when we're going to calculate H3O+, plus, we got to bring back our good friend, the ice table. Okay, so the good news is you get to use X is small, so that makes things so much simpler. So the way that, that you determine if you can use X is small is you take your strength of the acids, so that would be your molarity, and then you divide it by the K that's given in the problem. And as long as that is greater than 100, it satisfies that 5% rule. Don't you wish I told you about strength over K <laughs> in the equal equilibrium chapter? I was keeping them in my back pocket so you would appreciate me more. Okay, so let's actually try this and see what it looks like. It's not that hard because you've already done the things with the quadratic formula in equilibrium. So just kind of get in a pattern here. These are very, very pattern oriented. Just, you know, you kind of set things up and work it out. Okay, so now you have your um, HCN acid solution, we're given a Ka, we're given a strength, we want to find our hydrogen ion concentration. 
So the first thing we need to do is, well, we need to write an equation. So um, I write abbreviated equations. So if you want to move plus water and H3O plus, go for it. Um, I just write the dissociation. That's just how I am. Now, if you are somebody says, Dr. B, I just really want to be complete and thorough, man, more power to you. So your equation would look like this, plus H2O, here, this is in equilibrium, makes H3O plus, plus C and minus. Now, I just do this because water is not, it's a pure liquid, it's not gonna factor in our equilibrium constant. So, now that we have this, what we need to do next, so write an equation. Next, write your expression for your equilibrium constant. Over, so remember products over reactants or conjugate acid, conjugate base over acid. Okay, now I probably shouldn't have written it there, but that's okay. I'm usually a little bit better at this. I'll get my spacing right shortly. Okay, because I usually like to use this in my ice table. I still will. It's just gonna be a little bit. Okay, now plug in stuff from your problem. So here, 0 0.1. Now, this says we have the solution here, so that means we're starting out with approximately zero. So the book is gonna say about zero because we're ignoring the auto ionization of water because this is stronger than one times 10 to the negative fifth molar. So we're just gonna say zero. There's technically a tiny, tiny bit. One times 10 to the negative seventh to be exact. Not going to matter. That's why we use significant figures. Okay, so what's gonna happen? Our reactant here is going to become products, minus x. So you gotta balance your equation, but it's easy because in equilibrium, acids associate one product, or one proton at a time. So here, 0 0.1 minus x, x and x. So, now, here we have Ka, so we have 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th, plug and chug, x times x over 0 0.1 minus x, right? So most of the time I'll write that as x squared. Now, can we use x as small? Say, please say yes. So, M over K, that would be 0 0.1 over 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th. Do you know any, if you know anything about properties of exponents, you're going to go, I don't even need to put that in the calculator. But if you don't, let me show you putting it in the calculator. That is much greater than 100. Do we agree? Yes. So, X is small. Boom, X goes away. Yes, we like that. So now, this makes the math so much easier. This is why people like doing acids and bases, because it's not that complicated yet. It's really not that complicated, period. Okay, so now let's take 4.9 times 10 to the negative 10th, and let's multiply by 0.1, okay? So that gives us 4.9 times 10 to the negative 11th. Some of you did that in your head, and I'm okay with that. Now all we gotta do is take the square root. And we ignore negative square roots because we can't have negative concentrations. So square root, seven times 10 to the negative six equals x. Now, are we done? Almost. This says find the concentration of H3O plus. So now we have to substitute and we have to add units. So this is the same as X, but let's actually answer the question. Equals seven times 10 to the negative six molar. That's the answer.